fantastic. Well, the first question is, what, what does this song mean? <laughs> like this is always You're motoring been down the street like, on a right? Bus. <laughs> I've always been like, what? What is it? What, Sister Christian? Like, what does it all mean? Everyone always asks me that same it's, question. Right? And do you have the answer? No, I don't. They're motoring down. They're and motoring. She's looking You're for just Mr. Motoring. Right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if the audience out there noticed that Mr. Sullivan actually sings. Maybe they saw me before. Yeah, that was me in the bus. Yes. That yes. Was me in the bus. You in the. It's so funny when I saw the film. I was like. That's not. <laughs> yeah. How did you end up getting a cameo in the movie? Um, I was. I did a lot of the casting of like the band uh, in the in the movie, as well as a lot of the extra singers. So um, I started casting. We shot. That was one of our last <laughs> things we shot in the movie, and we started picking out. The bus driver was. We were supposed to be really driving down a bus, but meanwhile we we're in a big sound stage, and the bus driver is actually Julianne's driver. So that's funny. And he's not a singer at all, so we had to revoice him. And so we started, you know, looking for other people and I just found this the guys right up front and I told the director, Adam Shankman, I'm like, you know, I don't wanna have to voice a guy. It's the beginning of the movie. That's the very first 30, 40 seconds of the movie. I was like, let's find a ringer, let's get a guy in there that knows how you know, knows how to sing, knows the song. He's like, fine, just do it. And I was like, I was like, okay. <laughs> So you're a singer, obviously. Uh, uh, Is this one of I your like secret, secret, singer. secret? I can hold the tune, I think. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Yeah, no, it was fun. It was really and cool. And the best part is, you know, because the at the end credits are alphabetic, our our first appearance. Order of appearance. We're like the fourth credit. Third. Not third. <laughs> <laughs> and the third credit. Well, maybe the fourth. I Which don't know. is awesome. Yeah. It's so funny. And the young girl, the young girl on the bus is uh, um, Garrett Grant, who's our producer. He, uh, that's his daughter. She's. So cute. You'll be all right adorable. tonight. Adorable. Yeah, she's really adorable. adorable. No, I love yeah. that scene. I love that it you're in fun. it. It was fun. It was fun to shoot. Also, I just, and also when, I, you know, when I'm on the set all the time with all the singers and, uh, and anytime we have any music on the set, I'm always involved. And that bus, you know, was cramped in the front of the bus is, you know, we had one, three cameras going. And um, so I had to be on the bus anyway. So, so you might as well like, oh, I might as well, I might as well break into song. Easy. Yeah, yeah I'll why just not? break into song and start. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get involved with the film? I got involved with the film a long time ago. The first time I saw a script was September 2009. Um, so that was like, you know, it'll be almost three years from the day. But I was involved even before that when I got a call from uh, New Line who I did Hairspray with, and they said, we have this musical, go see it in New York, it's off Broadway. And as soon as I saw it, I was, I was, yeah. I was, yeah. I was addicted. I was, you know, uh, a musical that guys like me, you know, 40 years old, and, you know, I'm not really the, the, the you know, prototype for going to see musicals, so um, it's something that I wanted to well, see. it's the soundtrack of. Yeah, it's 80s know, it's rock and roll music. Lives. It's yeah, really cool. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it was, it's 80s rock and roll, and it's, Foreigner, Def Leppard, White Snake, um, Twist's Sister. I mean, wh where else can you have Twist's Sister sung by Catherine Zeta Jones? Well, we have to talk about the Twist's Sister sequence because it's, mm -hmm. it's actually one of my favorites. And, and just to kind of give the audience yeah. a little bit of background. So, Catherine Zeta Jones' character is like totally anti the strip, mm -hmm. totally anti rock and roll. She's mm -hmm. like waging this big campaign. And there's a scene in the movie where she and her, you know, ladies' luncheon yeah, women, the, the, starts, the church ladies, the church ladies yeah. are on the strip protesting, and they're like, "We're not going to take it," and they literally sing, "We're not going to take it" by Twisted. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about it is that, of course, Dee Snyder was the person who appeared in front of Congress, heavy about, campaigner, was yeah. a heavy campaigner yeah. for, you know, free speech yep. when everyone was attacking music. So how did mm -hmm. that? How did that come about? Because the irony is so genius. The, I, I hope a lot of people, you know, really catch that because the big thing was that um, when we came up with the idea, uh, we're not going to take it as in the stage show, but we lost a couple characters in the stage show, um, these, uh, these foreign developers. And Catherine Zeta Jones's character was developed. And um, when we, we wanted this riot sequence to happen. And uh, I was sitting in a room with Adam Anders, our music producer, and Adam Shankman, the director. And we thought about what song can she sing? And it's like, automatically, it's like, what better song than the guy who was so against Tripper Gore back in the 80s and against, you know, she was so against rock and roll and he was fighting her. Let's use his song and have her sing it. The irony is going to be fantastic. So perfect. And it's great. It's the mash between that and then 
and then the mash of uh, Built This City by Jefferson Starship. And uh, you know, that was a really cool mashup idea to come up with. We were in the same meeting, and as soon as we start talking about it, um, the director sitting next to me and he says, we built this city, and I sort of said, we're not going to take built it. This we built the city, we're not going to take it. And, and we just came up with the mash right there on the couch. <laughs> and there's also great cameos in it. There's yeah. Kevin Cronin yeah. and Sebastian Bach, who are also, of course, on the side of, we built this city. Yeah. Nuno Betancourt from yeah. Extreme, and uh, Debbie Gibson got herself in there. Yes, she did. Yeah, Debbie, I wanted her to be a church lady, and she's Which like, she I'm a rocker. And I'm like, you're a church lady. I'm not even going to comment. Like, no, I'm, I'm not, a not even, even going to touch that one. <laughs> but, yeah, she, but she was fun. She, yeah, no, she, she went for it's it. It's actually great. She went for it. But I have to say, for me, you know, Tom Cruise owns the film. Yeah, I mean, does. this is literally Tom Cruise's film. Stacey yeah. Jacks is, and Tom's voice yeah. is incredible. Like, how, how did you work? I mean, you were involved in all the music, all the singing, like yeah. everything, that the yeah. mix. Like, how did you and Tom work together, and how did his character evolve? Well, the movie really depended upon if Tom was going to do the film. Um, we, 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 for a couple, a couple of weeks, the movie was dead, and Tom was with a vocal coach um, who, and trying to see if he could actually sing. Was he with our friend? He was with uh, Ron Anderson, oh, okay. who, who was Axl Rose's vocal coach back in the 80s. He went on tour for a couple of years. So they spent ab about a two weeks together and uh, Anders and I uh, went in, Adam Anders and I went into the, to his house and we sat down with Tom and he was like, okay, let's hear it. <laughs> so he started doing some vocal exercises and we're like, okay, wanted dead or alive, let's hear it. And <gasps> you know, he started making, he started singing and, and his, his range, the high stuff, it was, it was right there. And then the low stuff, you know, he had this, this voice where we didn't want to emulate Axel, we didn't want to go after, you know, Def Leppard sound or because then it would be derivative or Molly Crew or anything. We wanted it to be Stacy Jacks. We wanted it to be the man, Stacy Jacks. And what was that voice? What was? And it's not Tom Cruise. So he, he was, you know, already in two weeks. We're like, okay, now take a little bit out of, you know, out of the out of the head, get down in a little bit more chest, and and he and he just right on the spot. And we discovered uh, Stacy Jacks's voice. Right there, and, and we just looked at it. We just looked at him. We like, you can do the movie, and he's like, really? And he's like, yeah, you, you sound great. He sounds yeah. incredible. Yeah, um, and and the testament to it is, we didn't put um, Paradise City in the movie really until about a few months ago, um, in post production, because I well, he shows up a little bit later in the film, not too late, but a little bit later, and I wanted him present in the movie somehow. So you don't see him on camera singing Paradise City, but at the very beginning of the movie, it's him singing Paradise City. Wow. And so we recorded that just a few months ago, and uh, you know, I never thought about it. Axl Rose, and if you really listen to that song, it is so hard to sing. It is so hard to sing. It's so hard to sing. We never thought twice about it. We're like, Tom, we want you to sing Paradise City. It's a really hard song. And he's just like, have you met me? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. We have another you know, building for you to climb. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> it's. I mean, it truly, it truly is amazing. And I, I also, I read that, and I, this, I love this. That you know, Tom was really conscious about not having a derivative character and yeah. not and trying to really find who Stacy Jacks was. And and his idea was was Hey Man, which is the name of a monkey. Yeah. So t did Tom literally come in one day and was like, uh, I need a monkey? Uh, he. I, m I remember I was I was with the director and he's like Tom just called him and he wants a monkey and we're like we'll say what he's like he wants a monkey called Hey Man he wants it to be his best friend you know back in the day who else had a monkey back Michael in the Jackson. 80s Michael Jackson so you know it's a little pop culture reference right and it also just shows that this guy is off his rocker he's living in his own world and. You know, he's been a rock star for a long time. He's not the up and comer uh, Stacey Jacks. He's been out on the circuit. He's been around for a while and he's probably lost a lot of friends. His band hates him. And who's his best friend? A baboon. I love Nate. that it's a baboon. It's not like yeah. a little monkey. No, it's a big monkey. It's a big baboon. He escaped called... on the set one night. Hey, man. He did. <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning, it's all of a sudden the, the trainer's like, nobody move. The monkey is missing. <laughs> he, was go he was gone for like 45 minutes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like 500 extras on the set. Everyone's just standing still. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And it's and the way and the way Stacy Jacks has these like 
hey man. Hey man. And so you never know if he's just saying, hey man, or if it's like the baboon. I yeah. mean, the whole thing is just comedy. I mean, it's yeah. really. His first scene of Alec is probably one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen. They are brilliant together to the point of we're like, oh, God, you know, maybe we should write a scene and go and reshoot something with them together because they're, it's, it's gold, it's priceless. So it really good. Is. Not that gold isn't priceless, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so everyone, please see this movie. It truly is yeah. a good time. I mean, it genuinely nothing but is. A good time. It's nothing but a yeah. good time. I mean, Russell Brand's amazing. Um, Catherine Zoe Jones, I mean, the entire cast. Big cast, a lot of people. And you were on the set forever and mixed and did all this, like the sound effects and were part of everything. Yeah, just, you know, everything from rehearsals, getting Tom, uh, helping get Tom prepared and the rest of the cast. And then um, all, the, all the recordings of the vocals and, and music and on the set and in, in the dub stage working and getting it sound like really cool in a 5-1 environment. <laughs> It's your chance to see your 80s songs in a big surround sound rock and roll environment. It's a big party, I think. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank and you. thank you so much for coming on the thank show. And thank everyone, you for please me. see this movie. You will not, you will not regret it.